The leaves are changing colors. Football is in full swing. American football, that is. And turkeys are finding themselves on edge. It's fall, SolidWorks users, and in my opinion, the best part of the fall season is the smell of pumpkin pie in the air. We're celebrating the season by bringing you a four-part series where we'll be modeling this pumpkin pie spice jar, complete with a custom threaded cap, living hinge, and a custom decal. I'm going to design this jar in the shape of a pumpkin, which is made up of a rotational pattern of wedges. So let's start building our first wedge. I'm going to create a reference sketch on the top plane. Let's draw a circle dimension to 3.25 inches, and I'll draw in a few construction lines for my first wedge. The full pumpkin will be made of 10 wedges, so that's a 36 degree wedge. I'm just going to create half of a wedge to mirror and pattern. So I'll set this angled line to 18 degrees. We will use the loft tool to create the wedge, so we need a few profile sketches. For the first profile, let's sketch on the front plane. Here I'll just draw the cross-sectional shape of the pumpkin wedge and dimension and constrain it to our initial reference sketch. Now let's create a reference plane for our other profile sketch. Navigate to Reference Geometry, Plane, and click on our angled line sketch. And we'll make this plane perpendicular to the top plane, so select that and click the green check mark to create the plane. Now let's sketch on this plane and I'll just draw the second wedge profile, slightly offset from the first one. Now, sketching on the top plane again, let's draw a loft guide curve, which I'll set tangent to our construction circle sketch. Exit the sketch and navigate to the lofted boss tool in the command manager. In the loft property manager, first select our two profiles. Then click under the Guide Curves section and select our Guide Curves sketch. That looks good there, so let's exit the Property Manager. And now we'll just mirror this body to complete the wedge. You'll find the Mirror command in the Command Manager. We'll first select the plane which we'd like to mirror this body about, in this case the front plane or this face here. And then under Bodies to Mirror, select our Half Wedge body. Ensure the Merge Solids body is checked and click the green check mark. Now notice the edge that's created on the outer face of the wedge. This is because these two faces are not tangent with each other, so they meet at a sharp edge. We can make these faces blend much better by editing the loft feature. Right click on the loft in the history tree and select edit feature. Show the start slash end constraints options. Here you can choose from several tangency constraints for your start and end profiles. Just keep in mind the order in which you select your profile sketches. The first profile on the list is your start profile, and the last profile on the list is your end profile. If you need to change the order of this list, you can do so by simply clicking these arrows to the left of the profiles box. Let's set a start constraint of normal to profile, and we'll keep our tangent length at the default value of 1. Now when we exit the command, you'll see we have a nicely blended mirror. Now that we have our completed wedge, let's pattern it to complete the pumpkin shape. In the drop-down under Linear Pattern, you'll see the Circular Pattern tool. Under Direction 1, you can select a circular edge or sketch, or a centerline sketch or part edge to pattern around. The edge of the tip of our wedge is our centerline, so let's select that. We'll pattern this 10 times, equally spaced around 360 degrees. Under the Bodies section, select the wedge body to display a preview of the pattern, and click the green check mark to complete the operation. 
The pattern tool creates separate bodies, so let's combine them together. Navigate to the Combine tool in the Command Manager. Ensure the Add option is selected and simply draw a box around the bodies in the modeling area to select all of them. Let's add a few fillets to soften things up. I'll first add 1 16th inch radius fillets in between the wedges using this toolbox that pops up to select all of the edges I want in one fell swoop. And I'll add a 3 8 inch radius fillet to the bottom edge by simply clicking the bottom face. Now let's make the bottom of this jar concave for some added strength. Sketching on the right plane, let's change the view to Hidden Lines Visible. And I'll use the Convert Entities tool to convert this silhouette edge to reference. We'll do a simple revolved cut, so let's draw half of our dome shape. I'll just set a few relations and dimensions to constrain the sketch. Once you're happy with the shape, exit the sketch. Navigate to Revolved Cut in the Command Manager and select the center line to revolve around. Again, I'll soften up this bottom edge using a 3 8 inch radius fillet. Now let's wrap up this part of the series by adding on the neck of the jar. Left click on this top face and enter the sketch environment. And we'll just sketch in a center point circle snapped to the origin and dimension it to 1.375 inches. Exit the sketch and navigate to the Extruded Boss tool, and we'll just do a blind extrusion at 5 eighths of an inch, and click OK. Finally, let's blend this neck in with a fillet. This time I'm going to use a different option in the Fillet tool, the Multi-Radius Fillet option. With this option selected, you're able to change the radius dimension for different edges using these control boxes. Just double click in the box for the edge you'd like to change and type in the new value. This is a handy way to add multiple radius fillets in a single operation. That wraps up part one of the series. In part two of the series, we will hollow out our jar and add the thread to its neck. Stay tuned.